Hello, welcome to Business Studies, Class 11, Chapter 1, Nature and Purpose of Business, Explanation, Part 3. And today we will be discussing on the trading communities. So, trading communi uh, communities are middlemen. That means they are the mediator who are linked between the manufacturer and the consumers. So, they are main uh, like they are mainly of four types of market intermediates or trading communities. So, intermediates I have already told you they are they act as a middleman, uh, as a broker who. Uh, like uh, who links between the manufacturer and the consumers so the four types of market intermediaries are the first one is agent or broker two distributors three wholesalers and the fourth one is the retailers so the first one is agent or broker means agent and brokers they sell goods or services on commissions so they also act as a businessman but they take commissions to sell their goods okay so they are that are the work done by the agents or the brokers likewise you must have seen many of you supposing if you want to watch a blockbuster movie and like supposing if you don't get a ticket sometimes you may need to buy a black ticket which is very expensive so that person acts as a broker or dalal and second one is the distributors distributors are generally privately owned so distributors are mainly uh, work as a private uh, and are operated by many companies so uh, selected by the manufacturer and they also buy different types of products and sell in a particular geographical area for example north india distributor etc like many of you have heard about supposing if you are working in a bislary water companies so the water companies the person who is manufacturing bislaries cannot go to every corners of the world just to sell their products so that is why they keep a middleman as a distributor the person who distributes the distributor comes to the manufacturer collects all the raw materials likewise of the finished goods the water the bislaries collects and takes it to the uh, different parts of the market and what he does is he keep all those products in a storehouse or a warehouse so from there he distributes all the goods to his uh, the person who always uh, to all the shopkeepers the wholesalers or the retailers so that is how the distributors work the third is the wholesalers so many of you must be knowing what does wholesaler means so wholesalers they refers to the trade in which goods are sold in a larger quantity means the wholesalers what they do is they mainly sell the goods in a larger quantity at a lesser price the person who carries on the wholesale trade is known as a wholesaler the person who carries on the wholesale is known as the wholesalers and wholesaler buys the goods directly from the manufacturer that means wholesalers are the one who directly purchase goods from the manufacturer that is why they sell the goods at a lesser price so they what they do is they buy the goods in a bulk and also they sell it to the retailers in a bulk and uh, the wholesaler act as a middleman between the manufacturer and the retailers the fourth one is the retailer so retail trade is the last link in the distribution chain that means the first one is the agent after agent distributor after distributor are the wholesalers and finally after the wholesaler comes the retailers so list retailers are the, are the last chain of distributions of goods so retail trade refers to sale of goods in a smaller lots to the final consumers so many of you have seen shops uh, you all have seen wholesalers also for example i'll give there are many wholesalers near to children park right many of you all seen it so many shopkeepers the many retailers they go there purchase goods in a bulky and then bring it home and in the in and around their 
areas or the surrounding where they have small shops so that is how they sell the goods to the consumers so he acts as a link between the wholesalers and the ultimate consumers so he also acts as a middleman why uh, the uh, whole, he purchases goods from the wholesalers and ultimately distributes to the consumers so retailing needs not necessarily be carried on its shop or store retailing includes selling goods door to door many of us have seen like uh, like buyers and all many people they like to, uh, uh, like what they do is they carry goods in their big big bags and they go door to door shops of the uh, door to door shops to sell their goods so retailers can it is not necessary they have to be a shop to run the uh, business so they can do it in a uh, door to door business and they can also do it in a televisions on telephone and on internet even they can do like many of you have seen in instagram these days youtube uh, like many social sites where they sell their goods and how they earn money in return so business can be done in various ways so with this we have finished with the trading communities and the next is the merchant corporations in merchant corporations are the financial institutions so they provide business loans and act as underwriter major role of merchants corporations or banks so that means merchant corporations are the ones who supports and helps the businesses by providing loans so under this there are five points let's see what are they the first one says providing finance number 2 promotional activities 3 brokers in stock exchange fourth advice in project management and the fifth advice in modernization and expansion so now let us go in detail the first one says providing finance means the merchant corporation provides help to both domestic as well as international finance that means both national and internationally so they help them with a business loan second one says promotional activities means in india merchant bankers they act as a promoter so the in india they act as a promoter and conduct feasibility study so uh, uh third one is brokers in stock exchange means merchant bankers they buy and sell shares that means brokers what they do is they buy and sell their shares in stock exchange on behalf of their client so they act uh, so on behalf of the client they act uh, like they do on their behalf they do all the bank related like buying and selling of shares of their clients the fourth one says advice in project management means they give advices regarding to the locations of the project and preparations of project report etc so they not only provide loan but also they give advices as well on preparing the project report the fifth one is advice in modernizations and expansion means they also help and guide the various companies for modernizations and expansion means to make the uh, like companies uh, in a um, advance uh, modernizations as well as in the expansion means to make uh, their uh, like business in a bigger way to expand their business so the next is the trade centers so in india there was more uh, india sorry india was more closely linked to the world market that means in earlier days india was one of the most closely linked to the marketplace especially to the european markets where a commercial revolution were taking place so the, uh, so today various trade centers are opening in india such as india international trade centers and world trade centers etc so now let us go in detail the first one says india international trade center that is i i t c so international trade center is a leading international investment and trade promotion organization 
organizations functioning for the last 17 years that means they have been functioning in india for the past 17 years okay and other countries under the leadership of mr chandrakant salunki so international trade center is one of the most leading international invest uh, investments okay so which has been functioning in india for the last 17 years so over this period iitc uh, india has successfully provided insights for preparations of policy and strategic framework for economic and industrial growth and will continue to do so that means they are still going on so iitc india has integrated a group of business tycoons that means all renowned famous tycoons uh, with high profile uh, entrepreneurs institutional investors and uh, hns so iitc india has the support and support and recognition recognitions of government of india and government of maharashtra for its activities that means they are free to run everything because the government has already given them the support if they go against the government then they can be termed as illegal so that is why to live in the society we must follow the rules and regulations given by the government so so that we can uh, like go for a very longer period of time so india has also the support of the government of india as well as government of maharashtras as well so iitc india provides assistance for strategic partnerships with overseas companies like joint ventures technology transfers setting up industries merge and acquisitions means overseas companies are the known as the uh, companies which are outside our country that means we are living in country so automatically overseas countries are like usa dubai and so on so iitc india has uh, presence in india and various countries so, so they even deal with the various other countries other than india and is actively working with the state and federal government for promotion of bilateral trade and in uh, and in outbound investments so that is how indian international trade center works so it has made the business very uh, like vast and because of the new technologies and new innovative ideas the business has been made very simpler uh, to run the business in both domestic as well as international ways so the next is the world trade organization wto the world trade organization is the only global international organizations which deals with the rules and regulations of trade between different nations so it was established on 1st january 1995 remember let me repeat it again so remember this very carefully so let me repeat it again the world trade organizations is the only global international organizations which deals with the rules and regulations of trade between different nations it was established on 1st january 1995 so what are let's see what are the natures of world trade organizations the first one says world trade organizations deals with the sales of trade between nations at global level that means they are done worldwide and second one is it contains contract signed by the government to bind the governments to keep their trade policies with agreed limits so uh, supposing if uh, if we don't follow the rules and regulations given by the con uh, like government then sometimes people they become very careless and they tend to do illegal work so to make the work more legal to make the work more honest so that we don't go to the wrong side so when if you want to do a good business uh, with the people and provide good quality of goods then obviously we have to follow the rules given by the government and we have to sign the contract as well so that um, the 
whatever we sign in the contract the only the list of the goods written on a contract can only be exported or um, imported other goods cannot be done so if they find any goods which are not there in the list then they may need to find give a heavy fine or they may lose their business as well number c it operates with a purpose of liber um, liberalizing trade and free flow of goods and services in the international market so if such thing if such facilities are provided if you follow the rules and regulations given by them then it is uh, we can make a free flow of goods and services we can do business freely without any doubt and number d says world uh, world trade organization settle disputes through some neutral procedures so obviously we have to follow the rules and procedures the process there are many process we need to go in a uh, systematic manner and number e it maintains functions is to ensure that trade flows as smoothly and freely as possible so they have to make the business so freely so that people they have the trust bonding on them and can easily do business without any doubts or without any uh, like without any fear so that is why world trade organization has made the business very easy and simpler if we follow the proper rules and regulations and the procedures so let's see what are the benefits of world trade organizations or the role of world trade organizations or their objectives so the major benefits are it promotes international peace that means peacefully they can do the business and also number c and so sorry number b settles disputes among member nations they also settle if they face any uh, like misunderstandings and also makes international trade very smooth by framing common rules and regulations if they follow uh, uh, commonly made if both the parties follow the same rules and regulations and automatically there is a very smooth functioning of the trading or the business number d and because of this there is a uh, economic growth and developing countries by giving them preferential treatment if you want to rise if you want to raise the economy of our country if you want to raise the development then we have to uh, uh, run the business in a preferred manner so that there is a uh, good treatment and helps the in helps the country to grow their economic and develop number e free trade helps in providing quality products and improving standard of living of the people obviously this is people living in this generation people they are very conscious towards the health what they want is they want a good quality of product uh, so that uh, sometimes they even go for a diet free product as well so that is uh, that has helped in improving the standard of living of people and also uh, they should be able to provide them a good quality product so the next says major imports and in exports india's top three imports let's see what are the india's top three imports remember please note it down uh, petroleum crude gold and silver electronic goods so that is these are the products which are being export is all which have been import now let's see what are the goods that exports petroleum products gems and jewelries pharma products so that uh, in that is the india's top three exports and top three imports mean the product which comes from outside india so an export means which we export to different countries so petroleum figures right at the top bottom in the list of import and export that means india imports crude petroleum and exports petroleum products that means what we imp what we get is the crude and what we export is the petroleum products so that is the difference uh, india's import gold and silver pearls and precious stones but exports gems and jewelries that means i mean like uh, that means what we are receiving is the gold and silver so with the gold and silver people are making <coughs> <coughs> excuse me and they're exporting gems and jewelries they make it so that is how the businesses are done
so with this we have finished with the uh, part one of the first chapter that is the history of the ancient business and in the next class we will be moving to the second part of the first chapter or the you can say section two of the first chapter that is the business so business in the current situation or the business in the present generation so that we'll be discussing in the next class clear